us for the ODL table preparation course for today. Um, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you will know how to participate in today's training. This session will be recorded and will be streaming live via the PKPKA Facebook page. The participants will have the opportunity to submit text questions by typing your questions into the chat box. You may send your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A sessions, whether maybe during the break or at the end of today's presentation. Okay, I believe table four is a topic many of us can relate to. How does the conventional of blended learning table four compared to the ODL version? This shall be our main discussion for today. Firstly, let me introduce our speaker. She is no she is no stranger to the e-learning in UMS. We have invited her before for several events in UMS. So I would like to share some um, bio data of the speaker. Screen. Is it belum keluar lagi? Okay. Screen dah nampak dah? Nampak tapi gelap. Ha. Oh, because Webex. Nampak tapi gelap mana belum. Slow connection. Okay. Okay, is my slides is already there? Okay, okay. Okay. Our speaker today, actually I already been introduced yesterday, but I thought I told Dr. Azida that I want to uh, introduce her um, with some pictures. Um, our speaker is a senior lecturer in the School of Educational Studies, University of Science Malaysia, USM. She is currently the Deputy Director of the Center for Development of Academic Excellence, CDAE USM. Her research interests are in the area of instructional design, e-learning and m-learning, educational technology, ICT and multimedia, and 21st century learning. She, she is the recipient for the prestigious Anugrah Academic Negara 2017, for the category Anugrah Pengajaran. And also, GLC is also the recipient of the Gold Award for Best Learning Model Blended in LearnX Impact Award 2018 in Melbourne, Australia. Since 2012, she has been appointed as MQA Assessor in the area of ICT, Multimedia, and ODL. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our speaker today, Associate Professor Dr. Azida Abu Zidani. So without um, Dr. Azida, without further ado, because I think everybody is very um, anticipating this session today, I would like to hand over the session to you uh, and the screen is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Sally, my friend. 
Okay, uh, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, and a very good morning everybody. Alhamdulillah. Um, okay, all right. Uh, this is my, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, the uh, continuity from yesterday's session. I hope that uh, we uh, can extend the the last the previous session on MTA01 on ODL towards today's session, which is preparation of table four in open distance learning. All right. So I think that um you know uh, for me giving talk to people will actually help me also to learn new things. All right. So because of uh, your questions and so on, so it, I think that I'm uh really um you know looking forward to give uh talk to everybody so that we can share and then i can learn new things too all right that is uh how i do my talk actually all right so for today all right uh for this session i'm going to start with the good the guidelines to good practices for assessment of students okay so this document is uh was produced in 2011 or 12 but it is still be used all right uh, for of the practices this is a general guide not only for odl but it can help us to identify the slp of students all right so today's uh, session will mostly focus on SLT because uh, assessment and SLT. We are going to talk about SLT uh, generally, okay? And then I'm going to focus on assessment. Then we are going to go to table four, all right? I know that some of us are quite confused on the elements of table four. All right? then, you know, there are some issues in uh making sure that if we embark on odl the slp of odl being uh, displayed correctly in our table four if not uh, we will have problem during the uh during the uh, accreditation process okay so that's why i'm going to go to the guideline to good practices okay of assessment of students okay i'm going to go through a little bit so that you can really determine on the peo plo and so on all right i think that most of us sometimes i i i uh, you know i highlight this because i uh, i found that uh, some of us when i do all this and so on they don't really understand uh, the concept of PEO, PLO, and some of the lecturers, they just do the table four according to their understanding. And then, you know, when we ask something, they don't understand. We just put the hours, SLT hours, even SLT is not very clear to some of us. Okay, so, uh, so I'm going to start with the guideline first. All right, so in MQA, we are looking at OBE. Okay, OBE learning outcomes. All right. So in our program, okay, in your program, when you would like to embark, okay, if let's like, say you have a new program that you would like to do, the, the uh, PPT HTP would like to do, then you must have a clear mind about, clear knowledge about OBE. Okay, so OBE means starting with a clear picture of what is important for students to be able to do. Okay, so when you start to develop your program, you have in your mind what is important for your students, okay, for the prospective student to be able to do first. Okay, you don't say, okay, I would like to teach this, I would like to teach that. No. What at the end of the course, at the end of the program, what students will be able to do okay so in uh, for example if let's say i'm teaching in the school of education all right so at the end of the program i'm seeing my students will be able to teach okay not only being able to teach but they are being able they will be able to um uh, be a creative teacher okay so then how to be a creative teacher then 
uh, creative and innovative teacher. So that should be in my mind. Okay, and beyond creative teacher, what else we would like them to be able to do when they graduate? All right, so OBE is um, uh, we start with a clear picture what is important for students to be able to do. Then we organize the curriculum. Okay, when you already know what you want, what is important for your students to do, then we organize the curriculum. Okay. Then we prepare the instruction, then assessment to make sure that his or her learning ultimately happen. All right, from study nineteen ninety three. All right. So, uh, uh, whoever joined the the webinar, can you please mute your microphone? Can you please mute my, my, your microphone? All right. So next. All right, so outcome-based education, we specify the desirable outcomes students should be able to demonstrate. I think, you know, you are well versed of this OB. I just would like to highlight about OB because it will reflect our table for later on, okay? We need that what outcomes, what are the desirable outcomes that you will be able your students will be able to demonstrate upon they participating in your program, the program that you want to develop or have been developed. All right. So, and then uh, OBA, okay, outcome based assessment. All right. The OBE is outcome based education. Outcome based assessment method should be constructively aligned. I think that, you know, some of us has problem to make sure that our um, uh, PEO, PLO, and uh, our assessment methods, okay, to make it constructively aligned with the achievement of the LOC learning outcomes. All right. So you must make sure that, okay, when you choose your assessment task or instrument, Okay, it, uh, the 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 uh, assessment are constructively aligned with the attainment of the LOs. Meaning that if your CLO uh, stated that at the end of this course, student will be able to do that, so to do whatever. All right, so your assessment should reflect that. Okay, meaning that they will achieve the LOs. Okay, so this is overview of. OBE and then so the intended learning outcome of the career this is the um, uh, the the structure of uh, the uh, curriculum learning outcomes of the curriculum learning outcomes for your course for example and then you formulated the learning outcome first all right and then from these the assessment criteria are developed okay the main problem when I uh, audit audited the table four, all right, the first thing that I would like to see is a correct, okay, uh, correct is not a good word actually, but uh, a measurable, a marriage, measurable learning outcomes, okay, and the assessment will be able to um, uh, achieve, okay, make, uh, we, we have to make sure that whatever the assessment we are doing will achieve, we let, we will lead to the learning outcomes of the students. All right. So the first thing when I check is the learning outcomes in table four, whether the lecturers have um, developed the learning outcomes correctly. Okay. Sometimes they just put that uh, after the end of the course, students will be able to understand Then it is out. All right. So it should be measurable. You cannot um, Put uh, include um, learning outcomes that is not measurable. We cannot measure understanding, so it is incorrect. All right, and then you are going to do the assessment, and then okay, you do you 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 design the assessment first, then you design the teaching learning activities. Okay, 
But what we always do is we design the curriculum, then on the learning teaching and learning activities, barulah then we are going to the assessment. Okay, that is the way we think. Okay, usually lecturers think like that. Okay, you have the curriculum. Okay, nak mengajar macam mana? How do we teach? Alright, and then okay, after we teach, how do we assess students? Alright, so actually you need to have the, the curriculum first and then you design the assessment. Alright, what activities are organized to assess? the student to evaluate the students so that the students will be able to meet the assessment criteria all right then you go to the teaching and learning activities so i hope that this is clear to all the lecturers and you if let's say you are from the quality center and so on please make sure that your your, your lecturers in your please your institution make sure that they know that this is the process not you do, you do the teaching and learning activities first and then you go to assessment, okay? All right, so uh, we are trying to relate the constructive alignment model to learning taxonomies. There are uh, a few learning taxonomies, all right, here we have Bloom taxonomy. Okay, one thing that I can see from my audit, all right, uh, like uh, I mentioned yesterday, okay, uh, last week I went for two audits, all right. In one of the PPT, what I found that, okay, they have prepared a very good documentation. Okay, we are satisfied with the documentation. However, when I look at table four, I can see that, all right, they are only looking at Bloom taxonomy, the cognitive part. So when you are looking at the cognitive part, you are going to look at only students' cognitive domain, all right? So in our assessment method, all right, we should, okay, in our, in our teaching and learning assessment, in our constructive al alignment, we need to look at cognitive domain effective domain and what is another one psychomotor psychomotor yes all right Psycho all right so meaning that in your table four it should reflect because you you are doing uh, the table four for one course but you are going to uh, align it with other courses all right, we are going to make sure that each of the domains will be um, addressed by all or uh, in all the courses. So this is very important, okay? And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the PPT, the, the HVP that we audit last uh, week, okay, uh, the table for all cognitive, all the table for our cognitive um, domain. In cognitive domain, meaning that all need to have final exams, okay? And you must remember, final exam is not necessary. It is not a must if you can address the learning outcomes using a proactive and psychological domain, all right? Okay, so... Let me just go to page 11, all right, in the guideline of uh, good practice. Okay, so this is, the, uh, you can Google this, uh, this particular document, all right. So I would like to highlight the table too. Right? So when you would like to um, you would like to develop, <laughs> develop your um, program, Okay, so you need to go to um, uh, look at this table too, all right? And then you try to put in this PEO, okay? PEO is Program Educational Objective, and then Program Learning Outcomes, and then Course Learning Outcomes. You need to constantly align these three in your program, okay? I'm talking about program. Okay, so in the course, also a table, uh, a table in table four that 
you need to highlight this. All right. And some of our lecturers, okay, what they do is they just stick. Okay, they just stick. Okay, rasa-rasanya CLO ini adalah uh, uh, constructively aligned with rasa-rasanya ada kot PO, PLO 4. So, just stick. Okay, it is just from perasaan. All right. So, I think the, the knowledge of each PLO in your institution need to be highlighted, all right, uh, the PEO of your uh, vision and mission as well, okay, whatever we do in our institution, we'll go back to our vision and mission, and then the PEO, and then the PLO, and then the CLO, all right, so what is the definition of PEO? Broad and describe the career and professional accomplishment of the graduates within five years of Upon graduation. Okay, this is if you don't understand what PEO is, you look at this particular definition. Okay, and try to imagine, visualize. Okay, how your graduate, uh, uh, what they will achieve, they accomplish within five years after they graduate. All right. So this is the how people write the PEO from this definition. All right. And then the program that any outcome will include the abilities of cognitive, psychomotor, and affective that graduate should be able to demonstrate at the time of graduation. Jadi, sebelum mereka dapat uh, the degree before they got their degree or their masters and so on, they should be able to demonstrate their abilities in these three domains, all right? This is this is uh, graduation grade. specific course learning outcomes, specific statement of what the learners are expected to achieve at the end of the course. Okay, at the end of a course A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, students able to have what they will be able to achieve what is um that's of uh good practice yeah of good right so of assessment i think guidelines and of good so you keep some of your friends so lecturers you expect to staff they are they are not able to differentiate what is PO, what is PLO and what PLO you can ask to particular document so they will know that how to differentiate this is after graduate this is before graduate and then this is color in one course so if a program has 50 courses then they would be able they have achieve 50 courses learning outcomes all right this is smaller all right masih uh, lagi banyak lah all right all right so uh, this is a cognitive all right so uh, the the, the uh, PO program educational objective the uh, Knowledge is in providing service to the IT industry locally and globally. So, what we expect our students will be able to do after graduation. This is key. Then, in the program, students will be able to apply mathematics, apply uh, programming, and so on. All right, before graduation. Okay, so when they graduate, they have all they can apply the mathematics and so on. And then CLO at the end of the course, student can add they can differentiate and so on. So this is in cognitive. Then we have here a active domain. Domain. Uh, active. Let's see, just now uh, we're talking about cognitive. They can the skill here, but they can lead. 
you know, cannot measure uh, with exams. All right. So, but we can we can see from if we are doing assessment, we can see that they can do presentation, we can communicate in a group work, we can lead. So this is PEO, all right? So at the end of, uh, no, after, within five years of their graduation, they will be able to, you know, we can see, oh, that is our students. He, he used to be our students, lah, tengok dekat TV, all right? Wow, he can speak. Okay, he can deliver the IT, uh, whatever IT problem in Malaysia. So, that is our student with effective domain. All right, and then uh, for PLO, all right, so PLO in effective domain, they will be for graduation. We can see okay, the student when he present, he is a uh, very uh, effective. Communication skills. Okay, he always can during during class participation, class activities. He someone who effectively communicate. Okay, and then they can uh, show the work and so on. This is just an example, but if effective domain will be more than this lah. All right. So just at the end of the course, student be able. To, this is CFO. They can do a presentation. All right. Okay. So another one is psychomotor. Di tadi tadi ni psychomotor. Now PO, if it is a PO on psychomotor, then you will your students will be, for example, an IT instructor. They will be able to demonstrate, okay, to uh, meaning that they uh, terkenal dengan uh, or bukanlah terkenal, but they will be able to do hands on on various thing on IT that is observable. All right, okay, you can see, okay, uh, this person uh, come to your house and do something, for example, so they have the psychomotor skills of the IT. All right, so and then PLO similar like that. Okay, at the end of the course, the program, the students will be able to do something. All right, they have a hands on skill, you know, psychomoto. All right, uh, but um, sometimes people are uh, confused because when we talk about psychomoto, we are talking about uh, things that like riding a bicycle, doing some uh, tasks that hands on. But in, for example, mathematics, psychomoto is doing uh, uh solving formula is considered as psychomotor something like that you know all right so the cost learning outcome should be uh for psychomotor cost learning outcome should be able to uh present something that his hands on all right that uh, lead to practical skills all right maybe you you, you ask them to do something in the uh, bankier lab and so on we have to demonstrate to you and so on so that is the differentiation between um uh domain connect cognitive effective and psychomotor why i am highlighting this before i show you table four because i think this is some of the problems that i found when i audit when i audit the table four all right, the, the lecturers, the academic staff, they won't be able to differentiate effective cognitive and psychomotor domain, whereby it is compulsory for a program to cover all the domain in the program. Okay. That, that the code. Okay. All right. So, I'll just look at this slide. Are going to the curriculum uh, your program. Okay. First thing that you need to know is students are the focus. Okay. Whatever happens, students are the focus. 
Alright, fikir dulu tentang pelajar Bukan fikir tentang curriculum Alright Then Then you are thinking about Okay, the program Learning out of PMO Alright Starting with a clear picture of what is important for students to be able to do As uh, if you can recall, I'm uh, from the beginning of this slide I was talking about what students be able to do This is student competency right? Student first in mind and then you have Cost and outcome with was cognitive effect And then Barulah, and you can think about the assessment, the assessment, and then teaching and learning activity. So this iterate, okay, the point is okay, iterate uh, between course learning outcome, assessment, teaching and learning activities. All right. So then we have to organize. We have. Uh, organize, we have to organize the curriculum, instruction, assessment to make sure learning ultimately ultimately happens. All right. So for ODL, remember, we can have online assessment. We can also have face-to-face -face assessment, not necessarily all online. As long as we cover the 80% online, all right, 80% online and um. 20% face to face or if you have 100% online no problem 80% and above should be online all right what what 80% it is the slp all right student learning time should be 80% and above online for odl all right also we are going to look at the teaching and learning activities for example, flip classroom, technology, we have projects, we have labs, okay? If let's say you are going to use virtual labs, okay? Or, uh, or physical labs, okay? So you must state it in uh, uh, clearly in your uh, PL. Okay? And then other learning experiences. So this is the whole program, whole program that you are going to develop and just make sure that you are designing and developing what is important for students to be able to do. Okay, jangan shock sendiri, jangan rasa, you know, sometimes because we have the program learning outcomes and then kita rasa uh, students may be able to do this and that, but our assessment, our teaching activities does not cater the course learning outcomes. Okay, and then, okay, this particular whole iteration, okay, go back to the other focus. This, this is what we count as student learning time. Okay, so from this, whatever happens here, it will calculate to the student's learning time. Okay, you must remember one credit equal to berapa? Siapa boleh jawab soalan ni? Okay. Berapa notional hour? Do you know what what is notional hour? Anybody can uh, answer in the chat box? One credit, 14 notional hours. And then two forty SRP. Alright, so if we have... If we have three credits, then the SLP will be 120. If we have four credits, then the SLP will be 160. All right. So this is, you know, do you know that, you know, when I go audit, some of the lecturers, they don't know about this. All right. They don't know that they should have 120 credits, 20 hours of SLP for three credit hours. Okay, mungkin nampak macam kalau orang yang dia biasa duduk di jabat kualiti dan biasa buat documentation and so on, this is not uh, satu perkara yang susah lah kan. However, some of our lecturers did not know about this. Alright, so this whole uh, 
um, process will uh, will combine into students' learning time. Okay, all right. So student learning time will uh, the time for students spend for learning, teaching, and assessment activities. So it will be contact learning time. I will teach it our kuliah or our tutorial. I will via our via the contact learning hours. Okay, learning time and then independent learning and preparation time and assessment time. All right. So this is what we are going to do in the table four. All right. So what do you, what you need to do before preparing table four is to list out the teaching and learning activities or assessment, okay, by learning outcome based on BBK. In the we call it um, BBK, barang penawaran khusus. So you need to uh, list out what are the learning teaching and learning activities. So that you will know your assessment as well as uh, to cater your learning outcomes. All right. So this is I refer to USM assessment online guidelines that we do during uh, last April. Okay, during COVID nineteen, which is based on the uh, good uh, practice of assessment. All right. Okay. So this is a uh, one of the, the example from our from our. Okay, yeah, we have exam 40%. All right, so you can see here. This should be, should be the here. And the cost, all right. This is the result. We make it like this. All right, so this is the list that we need to prepare before we go to table four. And then this is also, this is, uh, to the photos, the synopsis, the learning outcomes, and so on. All right, that we have in a course. Okay, so this will be transferred into the table four. All right. Okay, let me just look at the chat box. Okay. Question: If the cost is three credit hour, okay, three credit, three credit, three CH credit hour, like that. okay, uh, three hours lecture and one hour lecture. What is the best SLT value to be considered? Usually, when we have three credit hour, eh, betul ke tu, Datuk Azrul? Three credit hour lecture and one hour lecture. Ah, okay. All right. So uh, usually when we have three credit hours, we are going to give the students two, two hour lecture only and one hour tutorial. Okay. If you are having, um, you are having four credit hour, then uh, the advisable is three hours lecture and one hour tutorial. Okay, so because this is too much, because nanti bila kita kira when we count towards the independent learning, all right. Uh, if let's like, say this one will be four hours, yeah, four hours, uh, four hours, four hours independent learning will be also the same. None, uh, the independent learning later on when I show the table four. It will also four hours. And when you calculate our 14 weeks, it will be beyond, it will be beyond 84 credit. Okay, 84 hours. Okay. So I think that it is advisable that you reduce the uh two three hours lecture to only two hours lecture. Uh yeah, Dr. Azura, so that you won't have uh, so many uh Look here, SLT, I think you are going to All right. Okay, then. Uh, next question. Uh, since we have the PEO, PLO, MTOA1 for program conventional, ada kekah program untuk program ODL baru masih boleh guna PO dan PLO yang sama? Ya, boleh. Boleh. Tak ada masalah. Cuma mungkin macam semalam saya nyatakan when I I mentioned earlier, 
in MQA01, there is a part whereby we need to clarify how this PEO, PLO will be um, addressed in ODL. Okay, so you might want to um, go to your, remember yesterday I said if you don't have an ODL policy of globalized learning, for example, then you need to revise a little bit. Okay, but at, uh, usually we don't, you don't need to uh, um, amend so much on your PEO. Okay, so, but walaupun dia belajar, if let's like, say they are learning online using ODL, the PEO will be the same. Okay, if they learn IT at the end of the, uh, after they graduated, okay, they still will still be able to do the same thing as the conventional students do. So the PEO kita tak tukar lah. Okay, tak adalah pula dia nak membaiki just online and so on. Takkan lah PEO kita akan berubah menjadi the IT person will be able to do the IT work online only. Alright, uh, so PEO tak akan berubah. PLO, Program Learning Outcomes at the end of the 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 uh, the the, the uh, study, alright, before they graduate. Okay, takkanlah kita kena kata they will be able to do presentation online. Okay, sama saja. They will be able to gain all the conventional PLO but only the delivery will, of teaching and learning and assessment will be done online. Tetapi PO and PLO, kalau tak perlu ubah, tak perlu ubahlah begitu. Alright. Jadi kita akan ubah the way we teach only. The way we assess the students only. Alright. Jadi boleh guna. Okay. And then uh, dalam keadaan normal baru, adakah PLO yang ada sekarang masih terpakai? Ya. Masih terpakai. Alright, meaning saya cakap tadi lah Dr. Zaki, uh, PLO tidak berubah sebab whatever we would like to achieve at the end of the students when they graduate is still the same. Alright, dia tidak akan berubah menjadi online. Katakanlah you are teaching teachers, then tak, uh, mungkin uh, adakah you nak cakap okay at the end uh, when the students graduated, they will be able to teach online only. Okay, so sebenarnya the PLO should be the same. They will be able to go to school and teach. Okay, and then if let's say the COVID-19 uh, uh, happen again, uh, whatever condition, they, uh, meaning that they are going to teach a PJJ, for example, they will be able to um, teach similarly as they teach um, online uh, online learners and conventional. So the PLO mungkin tidak berubah sama sekali pun. Alright, PO tidak berubah, PLO tidak berubah, just the delivery. ODL is delivery. However, it will relate to the mission and mission of your uh, higher education provider in terms of globalized learning. So you nak men 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 melihat kepada pelajar uh, beyond the normal uh, teaching and learning delivery. Okay. All right. So this is the big. All right. So in MGF 2.0 competency, all right, this is what uh, we are going to uh, look at. All right. So we are going to look at cognitive. All right. Effective. Modified uh, cognitive, we are. Okay, well versed. Everybody is well versed on blue cognitive domains. But sometimes they forget about craft world, effective domain. All right. And then sometimes they are forgetting about Simpson 1972. All right. You can see that the lower order thing is here. All right. So, for example, uh, remembering, understanding. All right, effective responding and receiving. Okay, so meaning that if you ask question to your students, uh, uh, can you elaborate uh, whatever, then they cakap, they just menangguk. Ataupun dia kata, ha, ha. Then that is lower order. All right, then if they will be able to do this, and this, it is higher order thinking skill. All right. Sorry. 
Okay, and then, so how do we calculate the student learning time? Okay, so to calculate new time credit, all right, we should include face to face. I think everybody knows this. So, we let face to face, we get the time, all right. So, in table four, okay, we have virtual or physical, what we call synchronous. Okay, synchronous ni boleh berlaku, it can be happen, it can happen via virtual and physical. Okay, for example, today's Webex uh, class, okay, it is considered as virtual synchronous meetings, all right? So, it is face-to-face -face and it is guided learning. I am here with all of you. So, it is guided learning time. I'm here to guide you all. Alright, so some of us are, bila dia uh, jadi online ni semua dah pening. Okay, yang ni sebenarnya face-to-face uh, -face ke tak? Webex ni is face-to-face -face or not? Yes, it is face-to-face -face, but is, it is virtual face-to-face -face and it is considered as guided learning time. Alright, and then we will campur, we will add the student self-learning time. Okay, which is asynchronous. Okay, asynchronous ni meaning that, you know, for example, this week you are going to do the web session with your students. Next week, you have prepared a video, you have prepared a scene, self-instructional material, for example. <coughs> so, what you do is, okay, you tell your student next week, okay, we are going to do a flip classroom. Okay, but virtual, you know, not flip classroom, because classroom tak jadi. Okay, I'm going to prepare a video to you and then I'm going to include an activity to you and then you have to do the assessment, all right, within the class hour or any time that you are free and this will be counted as your attendance. For example, then that is a, a synchronous learning that replaces the face-to-face -face physical guided learning, okay? Physical, or not physical, virtual, okay? So, you can have asynchronous, okay? Plus, you have informal, meaning that before class, you will tell them, okay, please read page, this one, this one, this one, and then uh, in class, we are going to discuss about this. Then that is informal, all right? And then we have total assessment time, all right? So, this is an example of a course, okay, in USM. All right, so the title is PGT 201E Instructional Technology Practices. Okay, this is the Hasil Pembelajaran Outcomes. All right, so it will cover one, okay, Constructing Learning Model and so on. Okay, the taxonomy is C3. Okay, and then develop and manage learning tools. And it will be P08 and P3, okay, learning taxonomy. So, not necessarily all you need to include cognitive. Then, if you do an exam, each of these particular CLO will be, should be included in the exam question. All right. So, all right. So this is a value. This for effective. This one is guided response for psychomotor. This is application for cognitive. All right. So if you do like this, it is much more a clearer when you do table four and then, you know, you will know how to assess, to evaluate your students' learning. All right. So you go uh, to the effective domain. Okay, yeah, this one. All right. Okay, if you go to here, all right, you just include which one that you would like to, for example, just now, applying is C3. And then the response is P3. All right, so then this is.
Okay, then we have the application, the response, and so on. Okay, so in this one, final exam 40%. All right, sorry, in this one, uh, when I give the talk on how to uh, transfer your, uh, because we we are, we, we were transferring the exam work to password. Okay, so how about on the essay in this one? Okay. Uh, okay, but the body body but the, the essay is for the exam, sorry. And then the coursework is 60 percent. We have task C3, all right. We have test C3, okay. So this one will cover also the CLO1, all right. And then report is P3, and then presentation 10 percent is A3, okay. So this one, all right. Not necessarily sometimes what uh, uh, staff academic uh, would uh, rasa macam salah, all right, because they think that when it is CLO1, CLO2, CLO3, the CLO3 need to be much more uh, hot, okay, much more hot than the presentation 10% assessment, it is not enough. So the CLO3 should be uh, 20%. The um CLO1 should be um only 10 percent all right so no need to do like that okay it depends on this particular CLO all right let me just have a look yeah but told uh, Dr Dennis all right synchronous is life asynchronous is delay uh, if we give recorded lecture to our student does it consider as asynchronous teaching and learning uh, yes but i don't advise you to give your recorded synchronous lecture meaning that yang ni lah kan macam hari ni i buat talk i give talk like two hours for example we have our class for two hours that is not advisable that will be asynchronous learning because you need to go back to uh, the slt all right, so because uh, in, uh, there is another uh, guide for blended learning where by 10 minutes, um, 10 minutes video equal to one SLT. Okay, ah, saya terlupa pula nak share benda tu. But uh, if you recorded video, 10 minutes, it will be equally to equal to one hour of SLT. Okay. So, bila you want, when you like to do the asynchronous, jangan uh, just, you don't just uh, record your uh, synchronous live session for two hours and then you letak dekat you punya uh, smart EMS and then you say I have been doing uh, asynchronous. No, that is incorrect. You need to edit the video first. Why? Because during this live session, for example, okay, when I'm giving talk, and I, then I check the chat, right? So when I check the chat and so on, and I respond to your um, questions and so on, that is not um, me giving talk. I am discussing with you all. So that is not considered as lecture. So one hour of uh, video, uh, sorry, 10 minutes of video, video equal to one it's hour, one hour to twenty time. Because we consider that when they watch the video, they might rewind, they might forward, and so on. Okay, so. Can we design a course with 100% continuous assessment and no final exam? Of course, the drama. Yes, we can. Okay, we can do a course without having an exam you don't need to have an exam. We don't need to test students on cognitive if we don't need to see them using their cognitive ability. If let's say you want to test effective and psychomotor, why not? All right, not a problem at all, okay? I think report is effective. Yes, it can be effective, yes. Okay. The, the, uh, and Rosita. Uh, presentation will you say promoter? Yes, it can. All right, it depends on the context of your call. Sometimes 
dissertation can be a psychomotor if let's say uh, you are teaching English. Alright, you are teaching uh, something to do with languages, alright, and then you would like them to present something this or you want, would like them to katalah mengajar sastra English, okay, English literature, uh, example, and you are going to do role play, alright, role play is some sort like presentation, they do a role play or you are teaching law, for example, okay, one become a magistrate, one become a lawyer, one become a, a whatever lah, okay, then that will be psychomotor, so presentation can be considered as uh, psychomotor as well and then you can use a uh, presentation lah all right betul uh, not not only uh, pm rosita not only because they can uh, they operate the projector and so on sometimes they tak operate pun uh, dia dah senang aja they just masuk 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 but the way they present the way they have to do something can be considered as psychomotor, right? Kalau kita buat role play, for example, present in a role play, meaning that kalau dia nak jadi magistrate, they will know the body language of a, a magistrate, for example. And then that is psychomotor, all right? Uh, it, is assessment of report appropriate for psychomotor domain? Why not observation of the ability of for hands-on? All right, assessment of report. Uh, the report will be effective, okay, effective, but let's say before they produce the report, they have to do something, then it is psychomotor, all right? Uh, report is effective, yes. The, the what they do before they produce the report can be psychomotor. Depends on what you ask them to do. How uh, can kita mengukur dengan psychomotor atau efektif pada peperiksaan akhir dan bukan ke domain kognitif. Biasanya kita akan lihat uh, kognitif sahaja pada peperiksaan akhir sebab mereka ber kena berfikir. Alright. Kena berfikir dan walaupun, contoh ya, uh, we, if we have uh, mathematics, alright, subject mathematics, alright, so in uh, an exam, we are going to give them a question, alright, a question, then they are going to do it uh, alone, alright, during the exam, we, we were not there, we are not there, alright, compared to mathematics, when they are doing hands-on, uh, for assignment, for tutorial, for whatever that we or uh, they present in class, for example, that can be considered as psychomotor sebab there are someone observing them doing that. Alright, uh, kena, kena fikir tu, kena ingat tu. Psychomotor biasanya kita uh, access, kita evaluate while uh, dia, dia psychomotor while kita as a teacher, as a lecturer observe what they do. Okay, uh, macam tu. So, dia, dalam mathematics, you can do both. Okay, cognitive and psychomotor, but remember cognitive, they have to think, all right, they have to think and they are doing it alone. All right, okay. Dalam conventional table four, dalam mengira student learning time, kita menggunakan formula yang dicadang, contohnya satu jam kuliah, okay, bersamaan dengan satu jam self student learning time. Self student ini dikaitkan dengan asingkron. Okay, yang ni saya akan ceritakan saat lagi ya. Alright. And then adakah bermakna dalam ODL independent learning tersebut perlu ada arahan yang jelas, informal dalam sim yang kita belajar perlu self study. Sim sebenarnya adalah self study ya. Okay, sim adalah sebenarnya self study. It is not guided learning. That's why it is under um, digabungkan dalam table uh, dalam dalam uh, color uh, asynchronous. Okay, ianya sim adalah self study. So meaning that it is not guided learning. Cikgunya tidak berada. We are not there with our students. So sim ke ataupun asynchronous meaning that you don't you just you know you don't prepare the sim in advance but you are preparing uh, some materials in your uh, platform, e-learning platform or your 
uh, ODR platform, then it can be considered as unguided learning. All right. The students are guided only from the materials, from the instruction, okay, from the instruction that you give to them in the platform. Okay. I hope you understand that. All right. And then can where we can read about the difference between psychomotor and effective domains for uh, PLO. Uh, boleh rujuk kepada uh, dokumen tadi, group practices yang saya share tadi. Later on, I'll give the link lah. All right. Uh, the good practices of assessment. Okay. You, kat situ, you can tengok the punya uh, differentiation between effective and uh, um, uh, effective cognitive and psychomotor, yeah, dalam good practices of assessment. Okay. Selain exam quiz, individual assignment boleh dianggap kognitif. Uh, biasanya kita kepada kognitif in terms of giving student test. Uh, 